Can you guess how much it costs a family of four, a uh, mom and a dad, mm-hmm. or two primary breadwinners, both working, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, and two kids? Well, okay. So I've heard that statistic before where like money doesn't buy happiness, but apparently like if you get to 75000 a year, that's supposed to be like the peak amount of happiness that you can get from money before after that it stays neutral or even declines. Right. There's a point of diminishing return after $75,000 a year. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I would assume that would be about there. Maybe with the rising house prices, I'd say like a hundred thousand. And you remember the CEO in Seattle that started just paying his entire staff $75,000 a year. And that was, I think, I want to say 10 or more years ago. Well, you know, though, okay. I was actually just thinking about this today. Um, I lived in a two-bedroom apartment. I want to say only like five or six years ago, that was only 600 bucks. Uh And it was a nice apartment, you know, really big, had a patio, pet friendly, all that stuff. Uh, And now for something similar to that, you're looking at like probably 12 or 1400. Oh, yeah. You know? It's been astronomical. Mm -hmm. I hear that apartment rent has actually gone down this year a little Uh bit just because of all the apartments that are springing up. You've seen them. We passed the corner of uh, 49th and St. Clair the other day. Right, yeah. Oh, on the way to the monster trucks, which Uh we'll also talk about. But um, the cost of living for a family of four to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And let's define that first real quick. Have you heard about the 50-30-20 rule? Oh, okay. So I don't know if it's a Dave Ramsey concept or, but it, but it's pretty common now. I know the thirty is housing, right? No, fifty. Well, yes, you should only be spending about thirty percent, about thirty mm-hmm. percent of. Is it gross or net? One of those. I would think net. Twenty-eight to thirty-three gross or net, give mm-hmm. or take a little bit on housing. Right. And that should also include like your utilities and stuff. Right. Which is, you know, but but the, but now with streaming, we're paying m- just as much, if not more, mm-hmm. than we were paying for cable. Yeah. That's beside the point. The 50-30-20 rule is basically you spend 50% of your income on necessities. Okay. Which are food, clothing, shelter. Mm-hmm. And to that, I always add transportation climate. and communication. Okay. Well, yeah, I definitely and add climate, climate control. control under shelter. Right, right. You might hear, this is our first episode where the AC is running almost nonstop, by the way. To keep this uh, IFAF studio a comfy 69 degrees, mm-hmm. <laughs> like we like it. Like we th- we really seriously, nice. yeah, <laughs> not just because of that number and, and we're children, but because that's about what works and keeps us from mm-hmm. melting in here. Right. But um, the, <laughs> uh, the 50% goes to necessities. Mm-hmm. 30% goes to discretionary income. Okay. Where do you want to go eat tonight? Yeah, some fun. Do we want to go to Lagoon this summer? Mm-hmm. And 20% to savings. Right. So with that in mind, how much does a family of four living in Idaho need to live comfortably? The answer is $211,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And We're just two kids and most people around here have like four or seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes, man. That's significant. That's a, yeah. That was a shocker to me, speaking of shocker. Yeah, you want to know what the lowest is? Yeah. Mississippi. That makes sense. It does, yeah. That's always been one of the poorest states in the entire union anyway, with some of the worst schools too. Bummer. Um, and I think that theirs is 178. Okay. Yeah. I have a friend who loves the Instagram account of Cheap Old Houses. Right. I love that one too. And a lot of them are in the South. Yeah. yeah. I mean- I would live in the South if I could buy a big, could buy a nice home. antebellum mansion for, you know. Ooh, but then think of all the ghosts. Yeah. Like speaking of poltergeists, that's going to have some poltergeists. Speaking of putting your energy into the uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. transdimensional beings. Yeah. And then what's the highest? Uh, the highest yeah. is um, Massachusetts. Okay. At 301, I believe. Okay, so 178 is yeah. the lowest. Mm-hmm. Idaho's 211. Massachusetts, 301. Yeah. I guess. What's that? And I mean, Mass- Massachusetts being that high makes sense because that's where all of the politicians are. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's right next to D.C. Right. Of course, it's going to be that much, but. It's very, it's very Ivy League. It sort of makes you. Vacation in the Hamptons. I think it's very eye-opening that that happens to be the most expensive state. And I think it tells you a little bit about where money is going, where maybe it shouldn't be going, whatever. <laughs> okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so kind of crazy. And, uh, you know, at least we're further down than that. But yeah, considering that Idaho has never been like a really big metropolitan area, I'm a little surprised by how close it is to places like, um, you know, 
California and stuff, which is still quite a bit more, but you know, Idaho, still. Idaho Falls used to be slightly famous for affordability. Right. And also not paying people very well. But sure, but you didn't have to because it was affordable. Now it seems like every other American town that's stressed out. Yeah, right. Well, and it's kind of funny because back when I was uh, in history class in high school, we were talking about the Great Depression and how Idaho actually did okay. Like they didn't really fall into as bad of a situation as most of the other states because they were relatively self-sufficient and stuff like that. You know, and that sort of happened at, at, during the Great Recession, too. Right. Like, it there did, was definitely some, but it wasn't terrible. It hit some people, like mm-hmm. on the East Coast, right in 08 when it happened. Mm-hmm. It didn't really hit us till 2010. Right. And even then, not as hard because of our mm-hmm. major employers in the area. Right. Uh, the, the INL. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how we're a lot agricultural around here. So, it's sort of weird to see Idaho falling into the same line as everyone else is when before we were sort of an exe- an exception. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people live here because of the quality of life we used to be able to afford. Yeah, yeah. And now that's changing a little bit. Unless you bought a home in 2012. In that case, good for you. <laughs>